worship for leading us in such powerful worship and allowing us to indeed experience the presence of God. We want to welcome even those of us who are following us online, wherever you are reasoning us from, we say a big welcome, a warm welcome to All Saints Cathedral Youth Service. My name is James Kanye. I've been here since the beginning of the year, this being the fourth Sunday and the last Sunday of the month of January, where we introduced our theme for the year at All Saints Cathedral, taken from the letter of Apostle Paul to the church in Rome, chapter 12 and verse 2, as it is projected there, be transformed. But the complete version is that do not conform to the standards of this world, but be ye transformed in the renewing of your mind so that you are able to perceive, you are able to discern, you are able to tell you are able to know God's perfect will. We embarked on a journey and we started the book of Romans. And as we said right from the beginning, uh, uh, led by our provost, is that we have taken a new approach to pulpit ministry uh, where we are shifting from topical to a more exegetical approach to the scriptures that is what many people call expository preaching. You may not be able to do a complete expository preaching on, on the pulpit, uh, but you can allow the scripture to speak, and this is what we have attempted. We, I know that we have done our best, uh, but it, it, could, it could have been better if you have taken time, if you could take time and read those portions of the, of the scriptures on your own, so that when we get together, we will only be highlighting those teaching points uh, because we do not all have a lot of time. And therefore, our emphasis in the month of January, today being the last Sunday, is that believers will be encouraged to live an authentically transformed life, understanding that our righteousness comes from faith in Jesus, not our own works or adherence to religious laws. On the first Sunday, we did the background, an introduction, an introduction of the book of Romans, where we found Paul, a former a persecutor of the church, now introducing himself as the servant of Jesus Christ. On the second Sunday, we talked about uh, uh, the, re the revealed power, the revealed gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, which Paul says, I have been a witness of the power of the gospel because it has transformed me and I have witnessed this power transform nations and therefore I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ for it is the power of God unto salvation. And he continued and on Sunday, last Sunday, we looked at the wrath of God and disobedience of man. We looked at God's revelation, both the revelation of God's righteousness in chapter 1, verse 17, and revelation of God's wrath in chapter 1, verse 18. We also looked at the man's response, uh, both in obedience and also in rebellion. And then we also looked at God's response. Uh, and we saw that God uh, promises restoration, but condemnation for those who do not keep his word and his will. We talked about God giving them up to their own whims, to their own evil desires. And the chapter closed with a litany, with a catalog of sins and evil things that people do when they fail to keep their faith and confidence in God. And today, it's a long reading, a long one, because although the reader just did three verses, we are meant to, in, to interact with chapter 2, the entire chapter 2, and chapter 3, verse 1 to 8. Chapter 2 has got 29 verses. And chapter 3, we, want, we are meant to, to look at verse 1 to 8. 
I will attempt to do that, um, but given our short time, I will be looking at three things. That is God's impartial judgment, and then the second thing that we will look at after God's impartial judgment is the importance of uh, being a Jew or the importance of belonging, and finally, we look at the value of circumcision, the value of circumcision. <coughs> Sorry, I'm recovering from a throat infection. From verse 1, chapter 2, from verse 1 to 16, I have clustered that at God's ju uh, impartial judgment. In this portion of the scripture, and today, by the way, today's message is very personal. I want you to take it very personal as your personal message. When we talk about the Jews and the Gentiles, I want you to uh, rockerize it and, and, and make it a personal a message. This portion of the scripture looks at a Jew's false comfort and identity. You know, having been chosen people of God all the way from the book of uh, Exodus, uh, the Jews have been introduced as the children of God, a peculiar people, and... Uh, they used that and they expected that the Lord God would judge the world on the basis of the law as interpreted by the Jews. Not on the basis of the law as the Lord have it, but on the basis of the law as the Jews would interpret it. And therefore, having been chosen the people of God, they thought that they would be exempted from God's wrath even in times of disobedience. So, uh, in verse 1, Jews look down on the Gentiles. We see Jews looking down on the Gentiles for not keeping the demands of the Mosaic law. Yet, even as the custodians of the law themselves, they had themselves failed to keep it, and therefore, their judgment on others was hypocritical. Talk of uh, somebody judging others but not being able to themselves observe what they accuse others of. You know, like for example, a doctor telling you not to smoke because smoking is dangerous for you, and they are saying to you that when they are smoking. And Jesus observed that in, in his uh, Sermon on the Mount, that is chapter 7 of Matthew, verse 1, where Jesus said, do not judge, or you too will be judged. You, why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye. I like it in my mother tongue. You know, it comes out strongly. Eh? Like a small thing on your neighbor's eye, well, you have a whole log uh, in your own eye. And therefore, Jews down on the Gentiles, and they, they laughed at them because they could not keep the Mosaic law. And they thought these guys were real sinners. They cannot afford to keep the Mosaic law. They cannot live within our standards. And yet they themselves have failed to keep the same standards. They therefore, in verse three, 2 to 3, assuming judgment seat, eh, they assume the judgment seat over others. But remember, that did not exempt the Israelites from God's judgment. They had first to understand the law themselves and remain faithful to it. The law here is the word of God, is decrees and promises. And probably you could be the modern day Jew because you have been entrusted with the word of God. You know Jesus Christ who has been revealed to you. And today you know the word of God. You could be the Jew who sits on the judgment seat, judging the world of people who have not given their lives to Christ. And what we see in verse four is that the riches of God's kindness, tolerance and patience reads you to repentance. You know, Israel had despised God's goodness and assumed a low estate of God's patience. He was patient with Israel for so long. Israel had done a, 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 a huge number of atrocities. They had stoned their prophets. They had crucified their Messiah. But God continued in his patience. The reason why God had not judged Israel is because God took his time to allow them a window to repent. And therefore, 
that should not have been seen as God and willingness to judge them. So if you sit here as a believer, you have given your life to Christ, and you have been living a life of sin. Even preachers like myself live a life of sin. Come here, clothe ourselves, cover ourselves with white robes, but we are living a life of sin. But God is still patient with us. We have known preachers in this town who perform miracles, but they live a sinful life. Yes, even believers like you and I seated here doing all manner of things, but saying in the morning that I am your sacrifice. The reason why God is patient with you he is giving you an opportunity to repent. Verse 5, your prolonged ignorance will just make you stubborn. You know, if you do not repent, during that window, you only harden your heart. Your arrogance and your unrepentant heart only becomes worse if you don't take advantage of these availed windows to repent your sin. And therefore, that serves only to accumulate God's wrath against Israel. They took for granted God's patience and grace. Verse 6 to 11, God shall judge everyone according to their deeds, whether they are Jews with their law or Gentiles without their law. Those who keep God's law await the gift of eternal life. But those who reject the truth of God and allow evil, they must be prepared for the revelation of God's wrath and anger. Trouble and distress is, is loading. The writer, uh, the writer of this gospel shows clearly that these two characters shall be judged according to their pursuits. The things that you pursue in life shall come back to haunt you during the day of judgment. And this applies to all Jews and Gentiles alike, for God does not show partiality. Jews fast, then second, uh, uh, the Gentile, for the judgment of the Lord. According to 1 Peter, chapter 4, verse 17, the, judge, the judgment of the Lord shall, shall start where? Where do you think the judgment of the Lord shall start? According to 1 Peter, chapter 4, verse 17, the judgment of the Lord shall start in his house. The judgment shall start here. If you find children in your neighborhood painting your wall uh, led by your son, who should be the first person to punish? It's your own son. Who knows the rules of the house? Isn't it? Hey, isn't it? Took up a moja sasa up to that point. <laughs> so, so, even if Jews fail to believe, like it is said in chapter 3, verse 3, what if they fail to believe? God will never change his promises. His word will never be made futile by Israel's unbelief. If God says that you bless those who give, you come to his house, even as a sinner you give, the Lord will still bless you. But you will not escape his judgment. Because God will not allow sin to go unpunished. You come here, dance, do all good things, the Lord, the Lord will bless you because he must keep his word, but he will not allow sin to go unpunished. He still remains the God of the Jews who shall not let see to go, sin to go unpunished, but who will also fulfill his covenantal promises. That time, God shall vindicate himself. And having, verse 12 to 16, having, hearing, and knowing the law does not make the Jew better. Having, hearing, and knowing the law does not make the Jew better unless he keeps the same law. Okay, having, hearing, and knowing no law does not exempt the Gentile from knowing God and doing what is right. The human conscience bears witness that the truth of God is revealed to all humanity regardless of their race, creed, or geographical area. So these revealed truth shall judge all of us. Jews first, because they have the written code, and, the, and second, the Gentile, whose code is written in their consciences, so that the entire world will have no excuse. Otherwise, if the Jew is immune from judgment because of the law, 
Then the Gentile is equally immune for lack of it. Thus both the Jew and the Gentile need a savior. And that is Jesus Christ. For both the Jew and the Gentile shall be judged not according to the law as interpreted by the Jews, but according to the gospel. For God shall judge the secrets of men, not just on outward actions, but inward thoughts. Men shall be judged according to their attitude towards God. The second thing, my time is flying. I can't believe that I have done 15 minutes. 17 to 24, verse 17 to 24, the importance of belonging, the importance of value of being a Jew. What is the importance of you giving your life to Christ? In this portion, Paul addresses the Jews directly. He ad addresses the believer, the one who has the law, the one who knows the law, the one who has the scripture. Jews thought themselves superior and highly privileged over the Gentiles. And rightly so, they were. They were God's peculiar people, a special generation. So, a child of God is special, by all means. You cannot look down on a child of God. Somebody who has given their life to Christ, they are special. They have already been justified. We will be looking at the doctrine of justification pretty soon as we continue sharing, maybe not today. They were a special generation, as we see from the book of Exodus, all the way from chapter 19. As we observe in chapter 3, verse 1 to 3, these gave them a huge advantage over the rest of the world. As a child of God, God treats you special because you're a child of God. And that one does not, what, whatever, promise, whatever promises are for the children of God, they belong to you. They were entrusted with the oracles of God, the word of God. This was no mean advantage and favor. It was a huge advantage for the Gentile. Paul therefore challenges them and he asks them, okay, you call yourself a Jew and for a Jew you are. You rely on the law. That is the embodiment of knowledge and truth. You brag about your relationship with God and for sure you have a working relationship with God. If you know these, if you know his will and approve of what is superior, you know, you, you know his will and what is superior, for sure. And you are instructed by the law. You are informed by the word of God. All these things you know. And you are superior than the rest of the world. That is true. And these are pertinent questions that are, uh, and practical questions that we need to ask ourselves as well, as believers in Christ, who are entrusted with the truth of his word. We are believers. We rely on God's law. We talk about our relationship with Jesus. That is why we give testimonies. That is why we come to church. That is why we give our offering. We know his will and approve what is excellent, true. We are instructed by the word of God. Yes. In fact, down there he says, you are convicted and convinced that you are a guide to the blind. Because we are the ones who sing God take the message out there. We are the light to those who are in darkness. For sure. Instructor of the foolish. Teacher of the infants. Then, why not teach yourself? Why haven't these been reflected in your own life? That's what he's asking. In fact, he says, why steal? Why are you still stealing? If this is who you are, why are you st still stealing? He says, why are you still in adultery? Why do you rob temples? Why haven't I seen your 10% here? Why dishonor God by breaking the law? Why are you not in the fellowship of believers, like the ones introduced here, G2G and other fellowships? Why are you not into fellowship? Why are you a lone ranger Christian? Hasn't all these been of any use to you? Has in coming to church every Sunday and hearing the word and giving you a tithe and offering, has in singing in the choir, you know, having been religious, hasn't it been of any use to you? You neither look or behave like your kada. You know, in the military, the highest rank of non-commissioned officer is warrant officer. 
is if a, if a warrant officer is taken to the CEO for being on a wall, a wall is being away without official leave. That's a very serious offense in the military. Being away without official leave is called a wall. All, the, all absenteeism, in other words. All these petty, petty offenses. If a warrant officer is taken to the CEO for, for such kind of offenses, the CEO is a worried man. Because he says, if the warrant officer is the one who is doing this, then he is not living according to his calling. Because a warrant officer is the highest. That is warrant officer class 2 and class 1. Now, talk of an officer, a commission officer, whether lieutenant or general, because they start from second lieutenant all the way to general. If a major like myself is accused of selling bang, is accused of coming to work late, if accused of absenteeism, the senior officer will tell you, this is unlike officer. This is, this is, this is not officer-like. You are cadre. You know, the commissioning parchment that an officer gets from the president is that you have been given a special, the president has got special trust on every commissioned military officer. That is my parchment says, that the president has given you special parchment. He has got a special trust and present this to you. Can you imagine somebody who has president's special trust? Now he is caught out there taking bribes and selling bank. We are the people who are entrusted with the truth of the gospel and the truth of the word. And this is what Paul was telling the church in Ephesus. In Ephesians chapter 4, he says, Hey, brothers and sisters, as a prisoner of Christ, I urge you to live a life worthy the calling. Live a life worthy the calling that you have received. Come on. <laughs> eh? What is wrong with you? That's what Paul is asking this guy. Why can't you live according to your calling? Have you normalized sin and lived a false identity? You know, just like Moses when he went to the mountain, he came with his face shining and he had, he had to veil because people were afraid of his face because his face was, 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 uh, was uh, illuminating. The, the power of God, the presence of God. So he had to put a veil. Today, I see some characters walking in town with their faces veiled, and they shine nothing. And even here, veiling is not just putting that. You know, the testimony that we share is a, is a veil. The suit that we wear on Sunday, the gowns that we put on here with a, with a pera and a, my, my brother, uh, Aduya, Saitani. Ile magbazi tunava hapa. It's a veil. You know, if we, if we do not leave, the Lord knows. If we do not leave our testimony, the Lord, know, the Lord knows. You cannot cheat, cheat uh, the world and cheat uh, the Lord. That is what I call false identity. What is the importance of you becoming a child of God? Is there any importance? Is there any advantage? Hey, I have five minutes to finish. Are you misrepresenting the kingdom? Are you misguiding others and cause them to blaspheme the name of the Lord? Are you the cause? Why other people look at you and say, ah, come so and so can do this. What about me? And me, I'm not even kiogozi hapabele. Me, I think I can afford to. They use you as their canon. If a gentile deeds excelled those of a Jew in righteousness, that very fact condemned the Jew. If non-believers Leave something slightly better than you. That is enough to judge you and to condemn you. The Jew who had immeasurably better set of standards in the law of Moses. And brothers and sisters, I have to finish. Barrier of circumcision. For the Jews, the male physical circumcision was an outward sign of an inward commitment to belong to the, covenant, to the covenantal family of God. It was, a traditional, it was a tradition that was culturally carried over from the Old Testament. You can find that in Leviticus chapter 12. It was the requirement of Mosaic law, and Jews regarded it as guarantee of God's favor and blessings. Did you hear that? The Jews regarded it, that is circumcision, as a guarantee of God's favor 
and blessings. And you know, when we come here and, re and receive Jesus Christ, for us, our names are written in the book of life, and we are guaranteed to enter heaven. Don't you think so? We are instantly justified. That is what we will see very soon as we continue reading the book of Romans. We are instantly justified. Although we continue with regeneration, uh, uh, with, with the sanctification. Circumcision, therefore, was God's appointed sign of the covenant. You can read that in Genesis chapter 17, especially verse 11, which signified Abraham's covenant or co commitment to the Lord. So, circumcision was God's appointed sign of the covenant, which signified Abraham's covenantal commitment to the Lord, that the Lord alone would be his God, whom he would trust and serve. This was not an easy commitment. In a world where many people, including his own family, were polytheistic and idol worshippers, for him, it was an uphill task. It symbolized a self maledictory oath, a maledictory oath is where you invite a curse upon yourself in order to make an oath sure. So Abraham said, if I am not royal in faith and obedience to the Lord, may the sword of the Lord cut off me and my offspring as I have cut off my foreskin. That was a big thing. Circumcision, therefore, signified consecration to the Lord and his lordship. You can find that in Deuteronomy 10, 16. Other nations, other nations of course, practiced uh, circumcision like we find in Jeremiah 29, but not for the covenantal purposes as Israel did. However, important and traditional as it was, Paul here argues that the true sign, the true measure of belonging to God is not an outward mark on the physical body, but the regenerating power of the Holy Spirit within, the circumcision of the heart. Deuteronomy 36, Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 6, Genesis 17, 10. Let me repeat that for your Bible study as I finish. Deuteronomy 30, verse 6, Genesis 17, 10, and Jeremiah 4, 4. The circumcision of the heart. Otherwise, without the inward transformation, this old age ordinance is rendered useless and ineffective. It is just like your confirmation, your baptism, your whatever else that you have done here. You know there are big ceremonies. It is just like me and this clergy who are here. Our ordination from deacon, made deacon, made priest, big ceremonies here. For you, you are baptized, you are confirmed, you are made lay reader, you are commissioned as an useless. All those religious things, they are useless. If you don't live according to your call. For a Jew, what was the importance of circumcision? It is just a physical thing if they did not live according to the demands of the law. That is what Paul is saying. That your circumcision is purely useless. And you know, uh, from, my, from my tradition, uh, men get circumcised as a sign of adulthood. If you did not exhibit, because we were taught how to behave like an adult now or a mature man. If you do not exhibit a progression towards that direction of maturity, you are beaten by other men because you are showing that your circumcision was useless. So they will teach you lessons. How can you be circumcised and you are eating githeri from your pocket? on the road, and entering your mother's bedroom. You know, those things, they would, they would discipline you. From where I come, also, we have Wakurinu. Wakurinu, if they know that you are smoking in private, or you are engaged in uh, those ungodly activities, they will come to you, and they will teach you. They will get that, that demon out of you. They will beat that demon out of you. I, I think they, they stopped doing that. They used to. <laughs> Therefore... <laughs> Allow me to stop, to stop at that. Because, therefore, the gentle will be... <laughs> if the gentle who are uncircumcision observe the law, their uncircumcision shall be counted for them circumcision. Did you get that? If the gentle who are the uncircumcision observe the law, their uncircumcision shall be counted for them circumcision. Therefore, the gentle 
will be able to judge the circumcised Jew who has broken the law. Because the circumcised Jew will be like the uncircumcised if he did not keep the law. Here, the apostle has turned the tables. He strikes a Jew's pride who boasted in the seal of circumcision. Our righteousness is not hedged on the religious activities that we do, but on our faith in Jesus Christ. Through circumcision, brothers and sisters, through circumcision, brothers and sisters, is that of the heart. For God judges according to realities, not according to rights. He sees the heart, not the ritual. We shall only escape the wrath of God if your outward profession matches your inward transformation. That makes us faithful followers and disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ. For a righteousness away from the law has been revealed. Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world. Do I leave that to you to judge yourself? Brothers and sisters, we shall all be judged, Jews and Gentiles, according to the truth that we know. I call upon you like Paul in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1. I urge you as a prisoner of Christ to live a life worthy of the calling that you have received. In the name of God the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.